Welcome to Ethos English, the podcast for advanced English learners, the people who teach them. I'm Sean, and in just a few minutes a week, I'll help you boost your vocabulary and become a more confident and articulate English speaker. At the end of the episode, I provide clear definitions and examples of key words and phrases from the episode so that you can truly understand and apply your new vocabulary. If you go to ethosenglish.com and choose podcast from the drop down menu, you'll see extra resources for this episode, including the complete transcript with links to the resources I mentioned. You can also subscribe to my newsletter, which gives you exclusive access to a monthly Quizlet flashcard set with all of that month's vocabulary. Unless you are educated in metaphor, you are not safe to be let loose in the world. Those words were written by Robert Frost, the great American poet. Contrary to popular belief, metaphors are not mere decorations. In fact, you could say that metaphors are the very substance of thought, or as the cognitive scientist and comparative literature professor Douglas Hofstadter puts it, the core of cognition. James Geary, in his brilliant TED talk, Metaphorically Speaking, points out that we use about six metaphors a minute as we speak. Since the aim of coaching is to help people expand their thinking and see new perspectives and opportunities, it's perhaps unsurprising that metaphor is a key coaching tool. By exploring our ideas visually, we can break out of old patterns that are no longer helpful. For instance, if a person says, I'm stuck in a rut, they're unwittingly using a metaphor, that is, without realizing it. A rut is a deep, narrow track left in soft ground by a wheel, and goes back to the days when people traveled in carriages. Being stuck in a rut literally refers to a vehicle being unable to move forward, but metaphorically means being stuck in a boring or unpleasant situation. One of the things a coach does is reflect the client's own language, specifically the words or phrases that are emotionally charged. So, if a client said that they were stuck in a rut, I might respond, So you feel like you're stuck in a rut? And then I might add, What does that mean to you, to be stuck in a rut? And just the process of activating that metaphor in the client's mind, reminding them that what they said is actually a metaphor, can lead to new thinking. Think about it. What would you do if you were in a horse-drawn carriage that got stuck in a rut? Well, you might think of moving, but which way? Forwards or backwards? Or you might think, actually, this isn't the right metaphor, and then come up with a different one. About two years ago, I discovered an interview with David Burns, a prominent American psychiatrist who was an early adopter of cognitive behavioral therapy back in the 1980s. In the interview with Impact Theory host Tom Bilyeu, Dr. Burns shares an anecdote in illustrating the immense power of a well-deployed metaphor. He tells the story of a mother who suffered from anxiety because her daughter had had a serious injury while playing out in the street. Some boys had been given a pellet gun, and they accidentally shot her daughter in the face. Although the mother wasn't at fault, she spent years and years holding herself responsible. As a result, she struggled with a lot of anxiety. Dr. Burns' approach to this woman's problem is counterintuitive. Rather than trying to convince her to feel better, he reframes her suffering in a positive way. That is, he changes how it's expressed or understood. He helps her realize that her depression is actually an expression of her love of her daughter and her desire to keep her safe. Indeed, she even goes so far as to get a PhD in psychology in order to help her daughter cope. I can't begin to do this story justice, so if you're even remotely interested, go check out the link in the transcript. You'll find this anecdote starting at about minute 34. Now, here's where the metaphor comes in. Sometimes we can think of our problems as something that can be turned on and off, like a light switch. But Burns suggests another metaphor, that of the dial, like a round dial on a radio to turn the volume up or down. What's so fascinating about the dial metaphor is that it allows us to get out of black and white, all or nothing thinking. The same sense of duty can make us either incredibly successful or chronically depressed. It all depends what level the dial is at. For instance, I still struggle with crippling perfectionism. I love making this podcast, but I'm constantly having to cope with this voice in my head 
telling me that I'm boring, that if I was really good at this, I would have more downloads and more followers. Now, <laughs> if I reframe this in a positive light, you could say that this just shows that I have high standards and want to do the best work possible. If I use the dial metaphor, rather than trying to turn my perfectionism off, I can turn it down from 100% to a more imaginable level, say 15%. There's a useful phrasal verb in English which is dial back and means reduce or make less extreme. So my question to you is, what is it that you could be dialing back rather than switching off? Get in touch and share your thoughts with me on this by emailing me at sean at ethosenglish.com. Also, if you're curious about the coaching process, I'd be happy to set up a Zoom call to discuss it with you. Now, before I go over today's vocabulary, this is a reminder that this coming Saturday, the 10th of June, I'm hosting my second free workshop for EFL teachers whose first language isn't English. This week, we'll be discussing how to foster critical thinking in the EFL classroom. Go to ethosenglish.com to see a short video and to get your free ticket. Now, here's today's vocabulary. Contrary to popular belief, used to say that something is true even though people believe the opposite. Contrary to popular belief, deaf people often take great pleasure in music. Mere, used to emphasize how small or unimportant something or someone is. She lost the election by a mere 20 votes. Be stuck in a rut. Living or working in a situation that never changes so that you feel bored. I was stuck in a rut and decided to look for a new job. Unwittingly, in a way that shows you do not know or realize something. Synonym, unknowingly. Laura unwittingly threw away the winning lottery ticket. An early adopter. A person or organization that is among the first to use, buy, a system, product, idea. Business people were early adopters of mobile phones. Deploy. Use something or someone, especially in an effective way. The government is deploying a new system to track air pollution. Be at fault. Be responsible for something bad that's happened. The police said that the other driver was at fault. Counterintuitive. Something that does not happen in the way you would expect it to. It may seem counterintuitive to open a shop in the middle of a recession. Reframe something. Change the way something is expressed or considered. The CEO managed to reframe the company's difficulties as an opportunity to diversify. Crippling. Causing so much damage or harm that something no longer works or is no longer effective. Crippling shyness can seriously affect your work. Dial something back. Reduce something or make it less extreme. The candidates have dialed back their attacks on each other, but they're still making their differences clear. <laughs>